Hi, Liz and Annie and Bandit here with a tutorial about how to use another feature in Zoom that'll come in really handy. This one is the polling option that we all have in our instructor Zoom accounts. So the first thing we want to make sure everybody knows before they try to do this is that you need to make sure this is just good practice in general, but you need to make sure that your Zoom software is updated to the very latest version. So uh, for most people, that should be 4.6 point something, depending on whether you're running Mac or PC. And Annie is going to make a video, and actually I'm going to make a Mac video that accompanies, uh, explaining how you need to do this, because we think the procedure might be slightly different to update the software, depending on what OS you're in. But once you're updated to the latest version, you should have all the options that I have down here. So you should have polling, you should have breakout rooms, you should also have these reactions, again, where we can like, I don't know why this would be useful, but for some reason you can put little like, yeah, thumbs up onto your own video screen and if you need to do that. Okay, but what I'm gonna show you right now is the polling feature. So for this demo, Annie is my only student who's in my breakout, or not my breakout room, in my lecture, in my Zoom room. And I want to use this the same way that I would have used uh, clickers in my in-person lectures or app-based responding to questions that I stopped the lecture and asked students to react to or kind of a check of their understanding or whatever I needed them to like be participating in the lecture and respond to. So this is a really nice feature if you're planning to do your synchronous class instruction via Zoom because you can stop at any moment, ask everybody who's on the call in the Zoom room to uh, answer the questions on the poll. So with Annie, what I'm gonna do uh, is, I'm the instructor so I can see this, but she can't. I'm gonna go to this fake poll that I have set up for right now, <clears throat> and I'm gonna launch it. And as soon as I launch it, it goes to Annie as my student. And up here in the top corner, I can see how long I've given the students to take it, how long it's been deployed to the whole class. So let's say I'm going to give them 60 seconds or so. I can just watch that timer and let Annie have a chance, let the students have a chance to answer however many questions I give them. So in a second, when this poll is done, I will show you how to make a new poll. You can have more than two questions, but just for illustrative purposes, we decided to stick with two. Okay, so let's say 30 seconds, I'm going to end it, end the poll. And now I see this. So if I had other people in my Zoom room who had taken this, I would have, you know, obviously different breakdowns of the percentage responding for each thing. I can share the results with the class. So now Annie can see the results of the poll that she just took or the quiz that she just took. So you can see that in response to what is your favorite color, Annie has answered not green, but blue, which is correct. And then what is your name? She's also gotten that one right. It's not Liz, Bob, or don't know. It's actually Annie. So she's done really well on this. I can stop sharing the poll. Um, I could relaunch it if something happened or I wanted to like open it up to the class again, I could do that. If I wanted instead to make a different poll or different um, question that I could have people respond to, I go up here and I click on edit and it's going to take me to my uh, browser window for my Zoom account and pop up this window in which I can name a new poll with new questions. I can make it anonymous if I don't care who's responding to which question in which way. Type my question here. You have similar format options to what you would have anywhere, or any of these clicker kind of things. So one right answer, multiple right answers. I fill in the answers. So the only thing it requires is that if it's gonna be a single choice response, you have to have a right answer and a wrong answer, okay? And I can add a question here if I decide that I want more than one question in the poll. Then I save it, and then I can come back. Let me get back to the Zoom window. I can come back to this drop-down menu of my polling uh, option down at the bottom, and I could deploy whatever poll I wanted. So here's another poll that I've previously created. I could relaunch this for Annie to see. Uh, so you can see that she can also answer this one. Okay, she's working on this. She's not sure what is wrong with you. Answers are everything and nothing. And I can end that poll and I can share the results with the class. So now Annie knows how she's responded and whether she's responded in a way that's atypical compared to her classmates. So I can stop sharing that and I can get rid of the polling thing entirely if I want, or I could create a different question. The nice thing about this is that every single poll you create, which can have as many questions as you want, can be done in advance. You can, I can do this 
with me in my Zoom room here by myself with no students attending, I can start to create polling questions that I can then deploy during the appropriate lecture. So I can do all that, not needing anyone in the room, not needing anyone to like populate my uh, Zoom room or anything like that. And then they will still be saved and in my Zoom account whenever I'm ready to use them. Okay. I think that's all we need to cover for now. Any of my forgetting anything for the deploying the quizzes? Okay. All right, so good luck with that. We're going to make a potentially a complimentary portion of this video that lets you see what it looks like from the student side, but good luck.